resourcing gives us energy or inspiration. It's a way to stay reasonably hopeful when you hear distressing news, how to collect yourself in the midst of stress, how to re-engage with what is most important when it seems like many others are distracted or despairing. Resourcing is a method or set of methods that you can draw on whenever needed. It is important that we learn to take care of ourselves in these uncertain times. When we take care of ourselves, we have more to give others, inspiration, renewal, and creativity that we nurture will find its way into the world. After my talk, I'm hoping we can share how we take care of ourselves wherever we are. You may already have something in mind, but if not, then perhaps something I share will inspire you to recall something you already do on a regular or sporadic basis, or perhaps you'll feel inspired to try something new. I'm going to start by giving you some, a variety of literary examples, the kinds of inspiration that you could adopt. The first is a short quote. It's probably too long to memorize, but if it lifts you, you could put this kind of resource onto your smartphone for reference whenever you had a chance to collect yourself. The Trappist monk, Thomas Merton, wrote, I suddenly saw the secret beauty of their hearts, the core of their reality where there is no sin, the person that each one of us is in God's eyes. If only they could all see themselves as they really are. If only we could see each other that way all the time. There would be no more war, no more hatred, no more cruelty, no more greed. We would love each other. The next quote brings us back down to earth. It's a practical and whimsical quote from Annie Lamott. Almost everything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes, including you. One more from John Lewis. I, I really like this one. You are a light. You are the light. Never let anyone, any person or any force dampen, dim, or diminish your light. Next, I have a short poem. Poems or inspirational quotes could also be written on paper and they could travel in your pocket. This little poem is by L.R. Nost. Here's to the bridge builders, the hand holders, the light bearers, those extraordinary souls wrapped in ordinary lives who quietly weave threads of humanity into an inhumane world. They are the unsung heroes in a world at war with itself. They are the whisperers of hope that peace is possible. Look for them in this present darkness. Light your candle with their flame and then let go. Build bridges, hold hands, bring light to a dark and desperate world. Be the hero you are looking for. Peace is possible. It begins with us. In a poem of this size, you could choose lines or phrases to travel with. You could begin with just the first two lines. Here's to the bridge builders, the hand holders, the light bearers. These lines hold both gratitude and yearning. Or these lines, build bridges, hold hands, bring light 
to a dark and desperate world. Or this line, be the hero you are looking for. You can find a poem you really like and dive into it. Later, rediscover what you once found or find something new to inspire and provide courage. I believe the Lord's Prayer in the Bible was meant to be that kind of poem. This last quote is one I personally like. The mystic Sri Nizargadatta wrote, wisdom tells me I am nothing. Love tells me I am everything. Between the two, my life flows. Here's the point. When you feel the weight of the world, abide with a quote that will lift you. Now I think is a good time to describe the practice of resourcing. I'm going to list five methods by number. Perhaps you'll hear something that resonates, something you could play with, or maybe you have ways to deal with stress that I don't mention. If so, I'd love to hear them following this talk. One, you might have an inspirational song, poem, quote, or mantra that you could use to lift you up. I've already given examples of quotes and poems. They can be simple. For example, be the change you want to see in the world. That quote can work if you take a moment to feel how you can apply it in even simple ways. There are so many types of short mantras that can invoke hope, caring, a spiritual ideal, and perseverance. The company I worked for most of my life was called Oakihi, actually pronounced Oakihi. Hope that came through. Oakihi in the Lakota language, which means I am able or I can do it. And as an aside, this is, this is a poetic word because the word sounds like what it means. Songs and music are renewing. Singing or toning can be done anywhere. If you can't sing out loud, you can sing inside. Indigenous cultures would sometimes quest a special song that would become strength. When I was incredibly injured as a 27 year old, I adopted the song Over the Rainbow as my power song. I would sing it at least several times a day. Chanting is a combination of toning rhythm and song. You can riff with any song you love if it helps you to embody the music. You can also listen to music, which may mean songs in nature or listening with a headphone to something that really lifts you up. Two, love is an aspect of being and is always loving you if you are open to that. But it may help to have an identified source of unconditional love that you can invoke. If we quiet our minds to the extent possible, we can imagine the love that we know someone feels for us, a parent, partner, sibling, or close friend. We can exchange love in a circle as a way of spreading friendliness, feeling their love and loving them in return. The spirit of love comes from any source that resonates within, from a pet, from trees, from true community, from the source of love, from someone no longer living, such as a grandparent, hero, or saint. Love can come from a mythic figure, such as Mother Nature, a guardian angel, the Buddha, or Jesus. Thich Nhat Han had a practice with many pebbles, each pebble representing someone 
with whom he resonated love. He would hold a pebble to strengthen the giving and receiving of love with that person. Any memento or photo may also associate our focus back onto love. Three, art. Reflecting on your creative process when the tools of the craft aren't present and then re-engaging with your art when you are in the proper setting. Examples include writing, photography, crafting, cooking, gardening, anything that involves imagination. Any creative process can flirt with the muse. You can also make your craft objects more accessible. Have a recording device handy to catch your imagination in process, perhaps words for a poem, or to remind you what is important, an intention for later. You can have plants in your office, more than one camera and visual art supplies more readily at hand. Perhaps you get the idea. Four, active imagination. Imaginal engagement with a person or place. How might a religious teacher, hero, or good friend counsel or support you while in imaginal conversation? How might Lao Tzu or Martin Luther King respond to your question or challenge? Do you have a special place in nature or a special room or building anywhere you can imagine that feels engaging and good? Can you imagine your own sacred garden? Maybe you have a strong actual memory that you can invoke. That's a memory door. Or a small, small memory moments, such as petting your dog when your dog's not there. Five, an ongoing practice such as deep breathing or shaking off stress. You might have a practice of putting your hands over your heart and taking a deep breath. You might practice beginner's mind, seeing the world in new ways. You may put a little sway in your movement, dance with a song or with the wind. So without breaking the flow, I'm going to briefly review the five methods of resourcing. One, an inspirational song, poem, quote, or mantra. Two, invoking unconditional love from any source that resonates with you. Three, art and musing with the creative process. Four, actually actively engaging with imagination to speak with a real or mythic person or to imagine yourself immersed in a special place, soaking up the good vibes. And five, engaging with an ongoing practice, such as shaking off stress, a deep breath or two, or noticing sweet details or wondrous beauty. I wanted to give you a full range of resources to draw on. I can clarify any part of this that may help you to develop a habit of resourcing. And I'm hoping that you can share how you renew yourselves, perhaps renewing fragments of habit that you once used as sanctuary or a way you rest as if in creative oasis. Share anything that grounds you, inspires you, or is uplifting. 